Thursdays with Jesus. If you have your Bibles handy this morning or just prefer to listen, we're going to be looking at Luke's gospel, specifically Luke chapter 9. And I want to read verses 12 through 27. So let's let's read that together as we start our day, beginning at verse 12. Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse 12. This is now the day was ending and 12 came and said to him, send the crowd away that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to find lodging and get something to eat. For here we are in a desolate place. But he said to them, you give them something to eat. And they said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless perhaps we go and buy food for all the people. For there were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, have them sit down to eat in groups of about 50 each. And they did so and had them all sit down. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he blessed them and broke them and gave and kept giving them to the disciples to set before the people. And they all ate and were satisfied. And the broken pieces which they had left over were picked up 12 baskets full. And it happened that while he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he questioned them saying, who do the people say that I am? They answered and said, John the Baptist, others say Elijah, but others that oh, one of the prophets of old has risen again. And he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered and said, the Christ of God. But he warned them and instructed them not to tell this to anyone, saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised up on the third day. And he was saying to them all, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. But what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory, in the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I say to you truthfully, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. A lot here, obviously, I'm not going to be able to cover all of this in detail. This is a familiar text, um, but certainly I want us to spend some time contemplating all of this today and and questioning ourselves. You know, what an experience this must have been for all who stood witness to this miracle. You know, with, with no more than, than five loaves of bread and two fish, the text tells us that 5,000 men were fed, that they all ate, and that they were all satisfied. And Jesus, he asked the question of them in verse 18, who do people say that I am? And they replied, well, some, Jesus, they say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say prophets of old have risen. But then Jesus makes it personal because it really doesn't matter what others say Jesus is. While we wish for all this God does to come to a knowledge of the truth, to come to repentance, at the end of the day, each of us are going to stand on our own two feet. Jesus and who Jesus is to us, who he is in our lives, their, our relationship to Jesus predicated on who he is, is going to ultimately uh, truly matter for all eternity. So who do you say that I am? Peter answers verse 20, you are the Christ of God. And that's exactly who Jesus is. He was the, he's the Messiah. He's the redeemer of prophecy. He's the one uh, come to save us. And Jesus goes on to reveal his mission on, on behalf of us. He would suffer for us. He would be rejected for us. He'd be murdered for us. And then he'd be raised on the third day for us, proving once for all that he was the Christ of God. He was God come in flesh. He was deity come to save us in human form. Now, a political Messiah that so many were counting on, not a military conqueror came to restore Israel. Like, like so many will count you on. And then Jesus gets to the heart of what that means for us as disciples. No doubt it was hard enough for, for them to hear what was going to happen to Jesus, their teacher. Jesus is going to inform them, if you want to follow me, if you truly want to follow me, if you want to be one of my disciples, you're going to have to walk in my steps. You're going to have to suffer. You too are going to be rejected. I just want you to read verse 23 again. It's a familiar passage to us but one that we ought to think about often. And he was saying to them, oh, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. See, Jesus paints for them just a most realistic picture of what it means to belong to him. If you want to belong to Jesus, if you want to follow Jesus, you got to be willing to deny yourself. You know, self-denial, that's really hard really hard for us. Setting our agenda aside, submitting to God's will as opposed to our way, that's hard for us, isn't it? You know, in denying oneself, taking up our, our cross daily and following Jesus, they would have known exactly the picture that Jesus was painting. Because in the Roman era of rule, if a man was crucified, he had to carry his cross to his execution. A cross literally hung on him before he hung on the cross. Carrying one's cross was one way, it was a one-way street that led to death. It was an instrument of torture, an instrument of humiliation, an instrument of death. And following Jesus, putting God and others before self, standing for truth, standing for what is right, being holy, righteous in an unrighteous and unholy world, it's going to be hard. And this would be a daily walk. Are we willing to do for Jesus what he was willing to do for us? 
to make the necessary sacrifices for him and his cause. Give up anything for him. This is about commitment. This is about being willing to sacrifice everything for him and his cause, because after all, that's what he did for us. And follow him. To imitate him in all ways, a continual pursuit. What would Jesus do is the ultimate question for us in every circumstance. And here's the why of it all. Listen to verse 24 again. For whoever wishes to save his life, that's one path. Jesus says we'll lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. That's two different paths, and that's two different destinations. Verse 25, a uh, 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 reasoned look at this. For what is a man profited to gain the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, the Son of Man will be ashamed of, of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the Holy Angels. But then that's for all of us. You see, we all have a choice. Who and what we will live for what our ambition will be, how we will respond to grace, to the words of Jesus, when it's not popular, even accepted in our culture, but understanding there's a destination for these paths. You see, there's nothing in this world, brethren, friends. There's, there's no fame, there's no job, there's no relationship, there's nothing that's worth losing our soul over. And then verse 27, very quickly, I say to you truthfully, there are some of those standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. I want to make a quick point, point here. The kingdom that Jesus speaks of here is the eternal kingdom church. He's not speaking of the fall of Jerusalem. He's certainly not speaking of the end of the world. Jesus is saying that there would be some who are here right now who will be there. The kingdom is ultimately established on the day of Pentecost, as we can read about being fulfilled in Acts 2. The church, kingdom that would come with power, as we can read in Acts 1, verse 8, Acts 2, the first four verses. No doubt for these disciples, this was a lot to take in. We realize that they still would completely get it at this moment. But brethren, we, re, we desperately need to analyze our own lives. Are we truly disciples of Jesus? Are we willing to sacrifice it all for the Lord and his calls? Do him and his kingdom come first in our lives? Are we striving daily to imitate Jesus in all ways and all circumstances? One more time, verse 23, he was saying to them, if anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses forfeits himself. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Father, for another day in your word, we are so thankful. Father, we are so very thankful for your son, for his sacrifice, for his willingness to come to this earth, to bear that cross, to die, suffer the humiliation that he did, Father, for us sinners. We continuously turn our back on him and choose sin. Father, may we recognize that as disciples of him, we are to follow him in all ways, in every circumstance, to imitate him. Father, recognizing that at times this would be hard, but understanding that this is a, an all-in commitment that sometimes is going to bring just very difficult circumstances to us in this life. But it's a path, Father, that we know that ends in eternal bliss. Father, we're so thankful for your son, for your love, for the grace, for the spirit that, that makes all of this possible, Father. We just pray that you would continue to bless us with knowledge and wisdom. So thankful for your word and what it does for us on a daily basis, Father. We pray that you be with those who are suffering, those who are hurting, those who are sick of our number. We especially ask you right now, Father, to be with Judy's um, nieces and nephews, Father, and the loss of their, their mother recently, and now the loss of their aunt. They've just been through so much in the last year or so, Father. Bless this good family. Bless us today, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.